الأنبياء والمرسلين هنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. أما بعد، dear respected brothers and sisters listening. I can just request uh, if you guys can come a bit closer, so to this side, if you can come slightly closer, inshallah. <coughs> inshallah. Can we try once more? Uh, I said salam first time, so uh, I'd like to try again. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah. It makes me feel a bit more better and uh, feel slightly less nervous. When I feel like everyone is listening uh, and I feel like the crowd is attentive, so Alhamdulillah, it gives me slight comfort. So that's why I say salam twice. <clears throat> Alhamdulillah, salam is something that we're supposed to spread anyway. The Prophet Sallallahu said, Afshu salam, said, spread salam. So we should make it a habit that we say salam as much as we can. And uh, if you look into you know, some uh, communities, especially you know, uh, the Arab communities, specifically uh, the Maghrib area from Morocco or Algeria, if you spend some time with them, you realize that they say salam so much. You walk outside the room, right? you come back in and say salam. They see you uh, outside the corridor. They've just, they've just seen you two minutes ago and <laughs> they say salam. So they have this, mashallah, this uh, culture of saying salam. And it creates love amongst uh, one another. So inshallah, you know, just a little reminder for you and I that we say salam as often as we can, inshallah. Um, inshallah, I won't speak too long. I thought we'd save the best till last. We have Sheikh Shuaib as well coming uh, after me, and also the great Qadi Saad Nomani as well. Uh, so I just want to share a, uh, a story, a particular incident that my teacher shared with us when I was in class once. And it's, it stays with me till today. And it's a source, of, it's, a, you know, it's a means of inspiration for myself, and hopefully, inshallah, for yourselves as well. <clears throat> and it just shows the the value of the Quran, how you know how powerful the Quran is, and the benefits the Quran has. Inshallah, hopefully, Mustafa um, Shuaib will explain further. My teacher related to us in class one day. He said that he read in an article, in an article he read that there's this grandfather. Every single day, every single day without fail after Fajr. Um, he would pray Quran without miss every single day after Fajr Salah. He would always uh, pray Quran, recite Quran. And so his grandson, you know, he wanted to imitate his uh, grandfather every single day, as the you know, as as his grandfather would pray Quran, the grandson would come next to him, pray and pray next to him, just copying him, just open the Quran. And uh, you know, just pretend that he's reciting Quran. So every single day, you know, this would happen. It came to a point where the, the grandson he questioned his grandfather, and he said to him, "You know, grandfather, you every single day you pray Quran, right? You pray Quran every single day. You don't even know what the meaning is, but yet without fail, after a Fajr Salah, you pray every single day, and you don't even know a single uh, word." What, uh, you don't even know a single word of the Quran, what it means. So the grandfather, didn't, he, he had an answer, but he didn't want to answer him directly. You see, he didn't want to answer his grandson directly. So he said to him, um, you see, there's a, there's a coal basket in the corner somewhere. There was a coal basket. And he said to him, that, get this coal basket and take it to the pond, the nearest pond. And every time you go to this pond, try to draw the water. And as soon as you try to draw the water, come back to the house. So he said, uh, so the grandson, what he did was he went to the pond. Uh, he took this uh, coal basket and he puts it inside the, the pond, he tries to draw the water and he tries to come back as quick as possible to the house. As soon as he comes to the house, the water seeps through. So he goes, go back again, and the same thing. So he goes, he goes to the pond, <coughs> tries to draw the water, comes back as quick as possible, water seep through again. Third time, fourth time, fifth time, and until, he t until the time when he gets sick of it, he says, and he becomes fed up, he says, I'm doing the same thing. I'm taking, going there with the basket, you know, I'm trying to draw the water. As soon as I come out, the water seep through. You know, what, what's the use? There's no use, there's no meaning to this. I can't draw the water. By the time I come, the water's gone. 
there's no point of it. You tell me to do something useless, basically. And he said to him, okay. He said, son, look at the basket. Said, have, have a look at the basket. Because what color was it before? And he said it was all black. It was uh, all the coal, all the salt of the coal. It was, the whole basket was covered in, uh, in dust. It was all black. <clears throat> and he goes, what color is it now? He goes, it's clean. It's totally clean. You know, you can see the action, uh, what color of the material is. He like, said, it's totally clean. He <clears throat> said, just like you know, when we recite the Quran, even though we do not know the meaning of the Quran, even though we don't know us, even if a person didn't know a single you know, word of the Quran, what it means, the Quran purifies our hearts. The more we recite the Quran, the more it will purify our hearts. This is the value, this is the benefit of the Quran, that even if you don't understand it, we are, it's benefiting our hearts. And dear respect to brothers and sisters, you know, really today we need to reflect on our hearts. Right? I'm not saying that don't start understand, uh, don't you know understand the Quran, understand the Quran as well, because just the benefit of reciting the Quran will affect your heart, will clean your heart. Imagine when you understand the Quran, imagine when you understand the Quran, and this is very important as well. It's very important to understand the Quran. Our hearts need, we need to reflect. We need to reflect. We need to see what is the state of our hearts. And a hadith I just came across, this comes to mind, famous hadith of Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He says to his companions, he said, Allah, listen, be attentive. Inna fil jasadi mudha. There is a there is a piece of flesh in our bodies. Ida salahat salahal jasadu kullu. That if it's rectified, if it's right, then the whole body will be rectified. It will be good. Ida fasadat, if it's corrupt, fasadal jasadu kullu. Then the whole body will be corrupt. If this piece of flesh is corrupt, then the whole body will be corrupt. Allah, he says, listen. He wants, his, he wants the companions to listen attentively. Allah, wahya al That listen, it's the heart. It's the heart. And our hearts, if it's in a bad state, then the whole body will be in a bad state. If it's corrupt, remember, if, if, if it's in a bad state, then the whole bodies will be corrupt. Our bodies will go towards what is, what is wrong. The desires will go towards the wrong desires. But if it's... If it's rectified, if it's good, then you would want to do more good things. Remember our nafs, it knows what's good and bad. فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا So it's been inspired with what is good and what is bad. The, 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 this, the, the nafs, it knows. It's about harnessing it. How do we harness it? It's with the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and particularly the Qur'an. Not just to recite it, not just to recite it, not just to recite it, understand the Qur'an. Many of the times we, you know, we we're so passionate, Subhanallah, about finishing the Quran, doing khatm of the Quran. We do, we might do many khatms of the Quran. It's something that you know, when we were young, uh, when we were in the maktab, it's something that people would boast about. You know, I've done that many khatms, that you know, this many khatms of the Quran, and when Ramadan comes, Subhanallah, we, we do as much as possible. But the reality is, you know, what use is it if we do not understand the Quran? Many of these khatams that we do, we come across the ayah, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ Quran. Don't they ponder about the Qur'an? And we're reading these, these verses of the Qur'an, and we're not even pondering about it. Imagine it, you're reciting these verses, you're saying, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ Quran," And you're referring to yourself. You're referring to yourself. But do recite, keep on reciting, do as much tilawah as possible. But at the same time, try to understand the Qur'an. Try to understand the Qur'an, because the beauty of the Qur'an is when you understand it. If it's anything from my uh, personal experience, when I studied uh, Alimiya, when I studied Alimiya, I studied Arabic for a couple of years, and then, you know, until I un uh, understood the Qur'an, when we started learning the tarjma of the Qur'an, the meaning of the Qur'an, Wallahi, this was the time when I felt like my Iman was strengthened. Because I understood the Qur'an. When you understand the Qur'an, you know it's the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You understand it's the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's a form of dhikr. And when, this is probably one of the best forms of dhikr. Why? Because it's a hudallil muttaqeen. As soon as we open the Quran, or rather as soon as we open, open the Quran, we finish Surah Al-Fatiha, what do we say? Alif, Lam, Mim, Dhalika Al-Kitab. Right? This is a book. La rayba fi. There's no doubt. Where there's no doubt. There's no doubt in it. Hudallil muttaqeen. And it's a guidance for those 
who are conscious of Allah, those people who have taqwa, those people who have taqwa, because when you understand the Quran, this is when you realize the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is when you realize what Iman really is. It's when you open, just open the first page of the Quran, subhanAllah. Look at the meaning of Surah Al-Fatiha. Right? Look at the meaning of Surah Al-Fatiha. And I'm telling you, this will inspire you. So let's let's go back to, um, to Surah Baqarah again. Alif Lam Mim. Can everybody here tell us what Alif Lam Mim means? Some scholars they have you know they have their certain opinions, but we can say that not every we don't know the meaning of it. Alif Lam Mim. Nobody can tell, you, tell us the meaning of Alif Lam Mim. So the Mufassirun they say straight away Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is trying to tell us that you don't know anything. Us as believers, you know, we're the servants of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Remember, we're servants of Allah. We don't question Allah. We don't question Allah. Allah said Alif Lam Mim. We open the Quran, we don't we don't found it already. We don't know what it means. So what do we do? We're reading the Quran. This is the book. Now this is we've got this book in front of us. La there's no doubt in this book. And Allah is telling us now, Mudalil Muttaqin is a guidance, is a source of guidance for those who have taqwa, those people who are aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what Iman is. These are the people who those who believe in the unseen. Those people who believe in the unseen. And this is what Iman really is, my brothers. It's about believing, believing in the unseen. So going back to the subject of the Quran, when you not just recite the Quran, when you understand the Quran, this is when you realize who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Because in reality, we cannot see Allah. Obviously, we cannot see Allah, right? We believe in Allah, but we don't. We, we, we can't see Him. We want Jannah, but we cannot see Jannah. We hear the the descriptions of Jannah in the Quran, but yet we have to believe in it. Yet we believe in it. We hear the descriptions of Jahannam in the Quran, but yet we, believe, we you know the punishments of Jahannam, but yet we still have to believe in it. The whole purpose of Iman is believing in the unseen. And this is when, when we want to increase our Iman, my brothers and sisters, go back to the Quran. Recite the Quran and not only recite it, understand the Quran. And I'm telling you, Allah, this will increase your Iman. The connection that you will have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase. When you're in Salah, for example, many of us, we just, you know, we just recite. And we always, uh, we, this question arises, or you know, we, we don't have any devotion, we can't do khushu. The best thing that has helped myself, and it's an advice I give to others as well, is understand the Quran. At least Surah Al-Fatiha. Understand the Quran, and I'm telling you, in your salah, you'll be more devoted. You'll have more khushu in your salah. So my dear respected brothers and sisters, I'm sure I've taken enough of your time. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enable us to recite the Quran day and night. Day and night. We shouldn't just restrict it to Ramadan. Yeah, we shouldn't just restrict it to Ramadan. We should, and we shouldn't just restrict it to when somebody, some, somebody close to us passes away. Unfortunately, this is a disrespect of the Quran. This is a great disrespect. Some people say they say that you know, in certain communities, certain uh, cultures, they allow that you know to leave the Quran on the floor. For example, some people they uh, you know they put the Quran from the recite. <coughs> You know, we don't want to go into the, you know, the fiqh aspect of it. But at least, my brother, those people who, you know, don't respect, uh, uh, to, according to us, they don't respect the Qur'an as much. At least they recite the Qur'an often. There are certain communities who respect the Qur'an so much, but they, yet they leave it so high on the shelf that they forget to read it. When somebody passes away, this is when they get it off the shelf, take it off the shelf, wipe the dust off, and this is when they recite. When Ramadan comes, they, wipe, they get it off the shelf, they take it off the shelf, wipe the dust off, and then they read the Quran. And because it's been so long, they're struggling to read the Quran. My dear respected brothers and sisters, don't let it come to that time. Re recite the Quran. You know, we don't say tomorrow, we start now, inshallah. This is a reminder for myself and yourself, inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan wa alhamdulillah.